TV and movie lovers, so you need to listen up. It can always be a little tough deciding what we're going to watch when there are just so many titles out on all of these platforms. Mm -hmm. But our friend Dale Pollock always tries to make it just a little bit easier for all of us with his helpful suggestions. And he is joining us now, so let's say good morning to film critic Dale Pollock. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, good morning, ladies. Great to see you. And of course, I always love getting the chance to ask about the shows and movies that are related to books, mm -hmm. of course. I'm a little biased. So mm -hmm. how is Great Expectations on Hulu? Well, let's just say it hasn't aged well in this adaptation. Dickens wrote this in 1861, Charles Dickens, and it became one of his classics. And what's kind of interesting is he wrote this novel in weekly segments that were carried in newspapers. And now we're back to doing it in weekly episodes. There's six episodes in this series. And I've got to say, this was very disappointing. I could imagine Charles Dickens rolling in his grave if he saw this adaptation. It just doesn't capture the book at all. It looks like it's going in a completely different direction. And although the cast is made up of good actors, especially Olivia Coleman, they are wasted in this effort. I mean, they're unlikable. The story doesn't really make sense. And it's become nasty and very sexualized, yeah. which really kind of surprised me. You don't think of Dickens being a center of sexual activity, but it certainly is in this adaptation of Great Expectations. So, you know, this is not your junior high novel that you read. And it's one of the worst adaptations of Dickens that I've ever seen. Well, so I... I just couldn't get this one at all. I, I watched three of the six episodes. That's all that's available now. And unless it takes a very dramatic turn for the better, I'm giving this one two popcorns. Wow, my wow. goodness, Dale. I was looking forward to this because I do like historical pieces or period piece dramas mm -hmm. where they sort of put the, all the costumes together because it gives a little bit of excitement. Mm -hmm. So it's so disappointing to see that you didn't enjoy it at all. Not at all. I do want to say too, is with some of the photos that we've shown here, I can't describe my feeling, but there just seems to be something off, off. about the costumes. It just doesn't seem it, right. No, it doesn't really fit the period, and certainly the dialogue doesn't fit the period at all. It's 21st century dialogue coming out of the mouths of 19th century characters, and that collision doesn't work. Mm. Well, I don't like when they do that. I hope that you like The Night Agent on Netflix a little better. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yes, I actually love The Night Agent. It's 11 episodes, which is a lot, and actually I think it could have been a couple shorter, but it introduces two really good young actors I was unfamiliar with, Gabriel Basso, who plays the male lead, and Lucien Buchanan, who plays his kind of partner in this. It's a confusing story. It's very international intrigue, but they keep it very exciting and this is a series that just keeps moving all the time it's very entertaining and, and for me it was a surprise that just kept getting better with every episode and that's the kind of series you want to find mm -hmm. the one that really motivates you to really watch and you if you've got time you want to watch two episodes if you've got more time you want to watch three episodes so you can make it through the series pretty quickly it's not heavy going but it's extremely well done, and there's a reason it's one of the most popular shows on Netflix right now. I love that when you just want to watch as many as you can and you're bummed out when the <laughs> season is over. Dale, after this segment, I have a question if you've watched something, too. Um, but I'm going to ask you, first tell us the popcorn rating for this. Four. Four popcorn. Oh, wow. One of the better series I've seen this year. Oh, that's fantastic. I think that always mm. comes when you don't have any expectations. It's yeah. true. Unlike great expectations. <laughs> when, yeah, which is great expectations. <laughs> right. They might be let down. Yeah, it's a below the mark. Okay, <laughs> so we have to talk about Remember This on PBS. I'm glad that we're throwing PBS in there because sometimes they have those gem of shows mm -hmm. that if you're not paying a close attention, you'll miss out on some great content. Very good point, and this is a great example of that. It's called Remember This, and it's a one-man show. It's on great performances on PBS. So look under that series, and you'll find this episode. David Strathairn, an actor who is, will be very familiar to people by his face, even if you don't know his name. He's been in countless movies and has won a lot of acting awards. He does a one-man show as a character named Jan, Jan Karski, who is a Hungarian and a not a Jew, but someone who witnesses what is happening to the Jews in the late 1930s and early 40s in Germany and in the surrounding countries. And he, in effect, becomes a witness to what is the beginning of the Holocaust. 
and he is financed by the Polish underground to go to England to meet with Winston Churchill and to go to America to meet with President Roosevelt. He meets with them and both of them do nothing to save the Jews in Europe. David Strathairn makes this such a cathartic experience. It's one of the best one-man shows I have ever seen. It just has an enormous impact on you. And it's shot in black and white, which may turn off some people, but hang in there. The reasons for black and white are apparent as the show goes on. But it's just an amazing turn by a very talented actor and a very moving story that's relevant now with the rise of anti-Semitism in this country and all over the world. This story carries a really powerful message of acceptance and love and caring. And it's just one of the best performances I've really seen in years. So uh, if you are up for it, it's, it's not easy subject matter. You've got to sit there and deal with the reality of the Holocaust. But it is so well written and just so amazingly acted by this performer. Uh, it's one of the best performances I've seen this year. For Popcorns, Dale? Yep, we had a feeling. <laughs> Before you we... know, it's, it's a show normally you would see in a theater, but seeing it at home, I think, is really a, a different kind of experience. Dale, quickly, I just watched my favorite series I've ever watched in my whole life. Have you seen Daisy Jones and the Six on Amazon Prime? <laughs> I have not, but with your recommendation, it's on my list. I have not checked it out. And okay. if you think it's that good, I will take a look at it. Thank you, Dale. And I'm reading the book right now, so we'll have to compare notes. All right. For everyone Great. at home now, those titles, again, a refresher is now on your screen in case you missed any. Great Expectations on Hulu, The Night Agent on Netflix, and remember this on PBS great performances. You can always find more of Dale's suggestions too on his website, dalempollock.com. Have a great weekend, Dale. We'll see you next week.